last presenter for the day for the health seminar is Dr. Gary Brown. He's in private practice in West Virginia. He just told me he has eight Italian greyhounds in the hospital right now, all with orthopedic injuries. So his talk is very appropriate. <laughs> so he obviously sees a very high uh, number of uh, Italian greyhounds with primarily fractures. So I'm gonna let him get started. Hey there, I know that uh, I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting several of you uh, professionally, and uh, uh, I, know, I know it might not have been a pleasure for you, but uh, I don't take offense to that, and, uh, and that, and that's fine and dandy. So uh, I will just, uh, I was contemplating not putting this picture up since it was a greyhound, but since it is a greyhound ministry, I thought uh, that would be okay, right? Uh, I just thought I'd tell you a couple of things about me. This is me as a kid. This, this is me on a good day, and this is what I see in the mirror. <laughs> this happens to be kind of where I get to work, and that's uh, that's fun. I'd be remiss if I didn't get to put a, uh, a picture of uh, some of my house and uh, inside the office there a bit. Uh, Mitzi and I do enjoy flying. That's something uh, else we uh, we kind of enjoy. Do. Now, until we can uh, until we can get these things trained to do this, we've uh, we've still got a lot of work to do. Thought I'd go uh, go into some things. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Iggy's are not quite as uh, fragile as say this is, but uh, certainly it seems like some days. And so we want to uh, 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 kind of give you a few ideas of some things that will help you uh, if you ever had to had to experience this. Now I'm not going to try to give you you know. This is a boomerang, okay? This is how you build a boomerang. This is not what I'm going to tell you today, okay? We're going to, we're going to try to keep it light and simple. But I do want to tell you that if you do have a question, I am more than willing to explain it and do. I, I don't want to talk down to you like you don't know anything, but I don't want to talk about, uh, and talk about things you don't, uh, you don't know about either. I do get drawn to this section in the in the bookstore an awful lot. Uh, and things, so I kind of feel like this is kind of the, the, the way we'll go with this. All right. First off, we have uh, uh, I've got a lot of radiographs here. I'm going to try to make a radiologist out of you. Uh, most everything is obvious uh, in things, but there are some things about this that I want you to see. Um, I you know, you know, the tiny greyhounds come from long distance. Uh, different countries and everything else to, to come to our practice and so I see a lot of different bandaging I see a lot of different things that come come to us that you know because the emergency was taken care of uh, and things and then uh, just needs a repair to, to get things going uh, I, I will I will tell you that one of the most common problems that that happens and the things that I see that actually creates a bigger problem than just a fracture radius on it is is the bandaging Okay, I uh, can tell you how many times that uh, there's huge amounts of icky, icky, gooey tape right on the incision line uh, where I'm going to want to go and uh, make an incision. So that makes it bad. And plus, uh, we, we see a lot of this. Uh, this essentially is, uh, you know, is a splint that was to stabilize that fracture. And you can kind of see that it, that it hasn't. Now, one of the biggest problems uh, that we see and going on is most people tend to bandage a leg and they bandage that leg straight this is not a straight bone okay and so the the what needs to be done is actually to splint the bone now it seems kind of an odd sort of something or other but if you just take a look at this you can see that this bone comes goes down and then straightens out well what does the bandage do it comes down slows down straightens out okay and so even though this is a straight splint here, we're putting a straight splint on a curved bone. So that, that therein lies part of the problem. I'll, I'll help you out a little bit with that. This just happens to be the same, same leg, different view. Uh, a lot of these things you'll see are two views. Uh, it's easier to get a 3D picture in your brain if you see it from this way as well as this way. Uh, I'm, going, I'm going to tell you a couple little things. Typically speaking, this is Unfortunately, this just happens to be one that had two broke legs, so you'll see that one in the back of I apologize. But uh, essentially, this is a uh, actually a, a leg that is in healing, it's been at the hospital a few days uh, and things. But uh, the, one of the first things that you'll notice is that, you know, even though we have this beautifully straight thing that we love to see on a, on a tight gray hand, uh, this bone actually kind of starts here 
and, and goes here and arches back down. Uh, you'll see that some more in some of these x-rays. So this is how I would recommend bandaging. Now, obviously this dog is asleep and, and I have chemical restraints that you guys most times don't have. So um, this, this is a lot easier for you to do. But I do want to, you know, it's very important that, that these bone pieces aren't manipulating and doing around, even though the dog doesn't think it hurts, and they'll, they'll beat this thing around, even in a splint, it will, you know, tear muscle, it can tear artery, veins, nerves, any of those other goodies that are in there. And we don't want that to happen. We want a, uh, uh, we want a, a good end result. So, uh, with this said, uh, there also is a carpal pad right here that's a big lump on the back side of that, on the back side of that leg. And so when you're putting something flat on that, this is another thing that we see, especially on, on dogs that I may not get to see for weeks after a, uh, after a fracture's happened, but it is a, uh, uh, is this straight, this straight splint wrote a hole uh, and an ulcer on this carpal pad. And it makes it very, very difficult to uh, re-bandage that later. The other thing too is when a splint comes up here, rub the hole right here. Uh, I see a lot of heads bobbing and shaking. You've seen this happen. It smells really nasty. The dog gets really bad. Also, this is very thin skin right over top of the end of that bone. And so then we, we get adhesions and all kinds of bad, bad things. So I'm trying to help you out how to do that. We don't even worry about the elbow, okay? Just forget the elbow is actually there, okay? So first off, we want to pad the valleys, okay? And so there's a hump right here. There's a valley right here at the toes. So we're padding this valley. Then we have another valley right here, okay? Now the important thing is we're, we're the, the center of this bone comes right down through there. Sorry. I couldn't dance to that other one went off a while ago. But essentially, you know, we're wanting to put something straight on this, on this dog's leg. And, and this is a slint. You can kind of see that this padding now is, you know, does make a straight line. It's a big old hump right here. This is actually the line of that radius. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and, you know, when you, I'm just trying to break it down so that you see why. You know, certain things should be done so that you have have a better result for, for things that happen. We then typically just put something that that bandage right there is very very soft. You can see now that there is a uh, there is that splint there. Your basic green uh, uh, that makes a splint. That, that's there, that's a straight line there. There's been some uh, gauze roll put around that. Something to make it look pretty. <laughs> and then sometimes uh, on some of these troublemakers, we might put some elastic on there for the ones that uh, give them something that you want. Uh, make some, make some nice and happy. Oops, I probably shouldn't have told you. I've got some gross slides in here too. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, if the next two slides, if, if somebody really gets gross, you may want to look away. Uh, this is a dog that got uh, uh, sent to us that uh, actually for a knee problem. Uh, of course, the bandaging, uh, this is the knee right here, and the bandaging came to here, okay? Which, you know, so it wasn't doing the knee anything. It was just a left second to tell us. I say just, but it didn't need bandaging uh, or anything. But anyway, you can see where the top of that bandage was so tight and where it wore that, uh, you know, those type of things happen. That's the first picture. I apologize. Uh, but that, that is this dog, you know, just looking at it from the back, and that's the way um, he got to ride. And then, you know, then we've got to do the, the still got to do knee surgery on this guy to uh, rebuild it. That's just the inside view of it. All right, I'll show you a good, pretty great chair once in a while, too. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is actually Dr. Brown. This is Dr. Brown. This is Amelia. All right, so, and that's kind of what the, those two use their uh, Christmas card every year. All right, here's a, uh, here, let's get into some breaks and I'll, I'll show you these really, try to get zip through these things fairly quick. You gotta imagine it's really hard for me to talk fast, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give it my best. <laughs> but uh, you, can, you can see in this in this leg, uh, the shape of that radius that, that you're seeing on that and the, and the bandaging we're wanting to see. Uh, there again, you can kind of see that this, uh, this plant kind of goes really nice with the back of that, that leg. Okay, which is this line here, but it does nothing actually to for the bone itself. It's just uh, uh, this. <laughs> this is uh, an attempt to try to get it a little bit better. Uh, and things. This is taken with the with a splint on. 
kind of see some uh, some shaking there, but sometimes it's still very difficult to get things. That's looking at it the other way. So it wasn't as lined up as one uh, one might think. I'm sorry, oh, it's, no. a, it's kind of a typical day at our hospital. <laughs> If you will, that okay. yeah. comes to a lot of different colors. So, you know, uh, when I get names mixed up, I know, I know you'll get the yellow one. Okay, uh, and, and things like that. If you will notice that we do have we have six uh, six Italian greyhounds, seven brooklets. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right, let's fix something here. Uh, you know, our, this is a uh, this is a little higher than our uh, than the typical one that that everyone talks about as far as an indie break. Uh, you know, sometimes shortly before this certainly was a desk screen. Uh, this is just the other view of it. Now, this is this is a procedure that that most orthopedic surgeons will highly discourage. Let me tell you a couple reasons. One is uh, this is a very very fine wire. This is not really a pin. It is measured in wire size. Okay, and so stabilizing that that leg that way need some help just the size of wire, okay? Uh, and the reason why this is so small is the the radius, instead of being a, a round bone uh, that you might uh, see in a, in, a, in a ham hock or something like this, it is actually oval like this. And so we can only put in a big enough pin that would that would touch the tip of the bone. Since we don't have, you know, problem looking at oval pins, uh, you know, we're using the round pins. Now, this does a couple good things for us, uh, and things as far as making a very small incision, making a very small exit incision, those types of things, but it is uh, uh, it is very delicate, and so it needs some help. Most orthopedic surgeons say do not do this because the pin can bend, it can break, uh, it's not good stabilization, uh, but uh, when, when the proper care, the aftercare is done appropriately, then, then it usually can, can do very, very well. Uh, this one's pinned. You can see that the, the radius is lined up very, very nicely. Um, the pin comes out, uh, uh, actually out of this bone. You can see this is a puppy right here, and this is a growth plate that isn't closed. So uh, this is a very young dog. That is not a fracture. That's also a growth plate. Growth plate. But this, this pin, this is uh, actually immediately post-surgery. And, and, and this pin is bent right here, that will be cut off. So don't, don't think that there's just a pin sticking up out of no way. <laughs> uh, and things. But uh, this also kind of gives you a view of the, the valley. The valley's here, and also the, the mountaintops here that, that we need to work at as far as uh, stabilizing this after. Uh, this, this ulna here, uh, you know, typically can be just manipulated through the skin. That's not lined up really well. Uh, it usually will heal very, very fine as long as we have the, the, the radius, which is the big one, uh, all lined up. This is just the other view, looking at it uh, uh, straight on, uh, you know, flat uh, like this. It looks like there's two pins, but that's just where the other one is, is bent up. Uh, this, ha this one is uh, uh, just a few weeks later. This is the same dog, it is healed. And you can see that the pin is cut off here. Uh, we'll uh, make just a hole big enough to get uh, get that pin out, pull it out, and then we have uh, uh, we have to go up there. Anybody, does everybody understand that? Or think? Uh, but like I say, this dog was splinted up until the, and actually after we removed the uh, removed that pin as well. This dog uh, healed fairly fairly fast. This is just another view of it as well. That's why that's very fast. <laughs> what do you mean? How long, how long before you took the pin out? Uh, that one was, uh, I think, four weeks. Yeah. But that was on Uh Yes. I'll show you some not so quick as well. So. That, that can happen. This is this is a more typical one. <coughs> Excuse me. You see, it's uh, you know it's much closer down here to the joint. Um, you know, with the with the pin and with the things, we want to always avoid the joint. Um, that's why you saw that it came out just uh, barely kissing uh, uh, the very top of this bone, so that it was uh, uh, doesn't affect the joint at all. Unless you want to, this is just a, a repair of that. That same one, and you can see that they almost lined up very nicely. That's it. Okay. This is uh, this is a, a little while later. Uh, this is actually uh, uh, you know, showing some healing time as, a, as, as time goes by in that same, same light. 
All right. I told you I'd throw you some good stuff in there every once in a while. <laughs> every once in a while. So they're, they're cuties and tooties. All right. This is, a, this is also another real high one um, that you can kind of see the, the shape of those bones. This one has actually been, uh, uh, this is an old fracture uh, that we didn't get for quite some time. And, and by some time, I, I, I would estimate this is probably six to eight weeks after it broke. Uh, you can already kind of see that the, the ulna has gotten very, very thin and uh, uh, kind of a, a really baby ulna, which isn't super, super bad, but uh, not, not the ideal situation, obviously. That's the same, same thing. This is, uh, this is just repair trying to, trying to take care of that. Uh, uh, doing. I will tell you that um, this this puppy dog actually um, uh, this is an older older X-ray and, and an older something or other. And then this is this is when we got this uh, this dog back. I sent it home, uh, which I don't do anymore uh, until I take the hardware out. Uh, and think it's just because that aftercare is so important. But uh, there are a couple little things with this. This is a small pin. Uh, even though I do call it pin, it's a wire size, but uh, we'll call it pin. Um, but you can kind of see that, uh, uh, like I say, that, that's lined up semi-decently, doing okay. Um, this is a little while later. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, tell it in this view, uh, except you do see a little bit of a, a, a small of hoochie pooch in that right there. Um, if you were to put a straight line, then you kind of got this, okay? So it did, the pin did bend. Uh, we've got some bony stuff that's healing here and trying to get some uh, godly good going there. It's trying really hard, but there's been motion uh, and things. And so this is uh, this is like about four weeks afterwards uh, from that. So. <laughs> is anybody too tired of going yet? That's, that was my cue right here. To make sure, we're, sure, sure we're doing okay. All right. Uh, just another healed guy right there. Uh, you know, like I say, I'm not trying to belabor this. Because uh, there's there's a lot of way to fix this, but this is just uh, uh, even though it's it's written up as uh, it's really disregarded. Uh, this is this is just one that we want to uh, uh, take a look at. This is one that is a slow heal. Okay, uh, kind of like you were talking about. This is actually a few weeks after uh, we placed that in. Everything's fine and dandy, a okay. But you just got a you just got a little baby healing right here, a little bit going right there. It's starting to do its thing. But it just doesn't uh, want to do it. And this is eight weeks out, uh, you know, that you would typically, you know, should have seen some really great healing going on uh, and things, but this, this dog just uh, didn't want to. This is 10 weeks, okay? And we're still getting, you know, they've done a great job. Uh, and things, but the, but, the, but the radius there is just not doing its, uh, doing its very, very best. So um, we actually pulled that hardware uh, you can kind of see where this, uh, where the pin was, okay? Uh, it's a little easier to see in the other view, but there actually is a hole right here, okay? Uh, a little dark hole. Okay? That That's actually where that was kind of drilled out, and, and we ended up uh, putting a bone graft in there, the handheld bone graft, to try to make it heal a little bit faster. So, and then at 14 weeks, finally. We have, we have good good things going. You can still see the this is the hole uh, that we where we put the bone graft and tucked it in and did whatever. You can kind of see that the healing is, is actually happening now. So we were we were kind of really tickled to death with that. Once it, once it finally happened. So do you just have that dog in a splint all that time? Yeah. Uh, this one this one here. Uh, I wish you this is this is actually a bilateral fracture, uh, which means both legs are broken. Uh, this is one we didn't get uh, really really quick either. Um, I believe this was a was a rescue dog named uh, uh, Iris. Uh, this uh, this is a this is the right one. There's the left one. All right, same old same old going on. However, you know we were we were looking at a at a kind of a timeline, and then what we were looking at is trying to. Uh, you know, get these things as, as quickly as possible. Try not to have uh, uh, too much of a day, uh, disabling uh, sort of thing, especially with two legs. Uh, we're going to be in some pain. We're going to be in some things. So uh, we ended up uh, plating this. Now this is a this is a titanium plate versus a uh, um, a stainless steel plate uh, in in that, but uh, which also kind of gives some uh, little different dynamics uh, you know, to these to these fractures. 
<coughs> that one's just a little off. You can see a crack there on the inside of that one. This is the other leg. You know, so uh, if you if you do see these x rays and somebody actually, you can kind of see where you kind of see through that leg a little bit. It's kind of a like, oh, it's not, uh, it's not even. This is this is a stainless steel leg. Okay, that's actually thinner than that. So that that's just a different dynamics of uh, of a type technique plate. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. oh, I would. Uh, I, I have uh, I have a few plates and some pens uh, that we uh, typically use uh, that I'll pass along and let you. I really want these back because it's like 500 bucks worth of, <laughs> of stuff. But I have. Uh, if you'll notice, there is uh, some different colors in here. The stainless steel uh, plate in here is a uh, uh, is a small plate that uh, kind of a finger plate that we'll we'll use on occasion. Uh, the uh, it's a 2.0 millimeter. That means two millimeters wide. Uh, is what type screws that it uses. Uh, there, the blue ones is a titanium plate, which uh, you know, also is a 2.0 millimeter plate. Um, then there is a green one, and I'll show you what it's going to be here in just a, just a minute. These are limited contact plates, or they're kind of specialty plates. And also there's two uh, pins in there that are the normal size, so you can kind of get an idea of what size the um, plates are, or the, and, uh, and, and the pins are in the, in the thing. The, uh, uh, this is a set of screws uh, that go along with those plates. The uh, blue ones match the blue plates, and the, and the brown ones match uh, uh, the little tiny ones. The, these, these are two most commonly used, are the two point of the blue ones and the brown ones. The brown ones are actually 1.5 millimeters. So, I mean, that's, that's really, really tiny. You're using a uh, one millimeter or 1.1 <coughs> millimeter drill when you're, when you're putting those in, so uh, it, it gets kind of tiny. But you pass it along and, and look at those. Uh, well, I mean, it, it depends. Uh, you know, that's a question for any any fracture. Right. Uh, you know, do you take it out? Do you put it in, or leave it in? Excuse me. And um, you know, most of the time, uh, let me show you a couple pictures. I'll come. I'll come right back to that. I'll tell you what. Let me see back one up. Okay. With this, with this fracture here, what, what you are asking for a plate, plain and simple is, this, is, this foot is supposed to bear weight and this leg is supposed to bear this dog's weight. Okay? Simple. Uh, when, when this is happening and during a fracture, uh, we want it to come up this foot, up in the deep bone, through these screws, up the plate, through the screws, back up the leg. Okay? Instead of just coming right straight up the bone because there's a fracture there now. So we're wanting to, we're wanting to do that. Now that holds it very, very stable so that it can uh, it can heal. But most plates and, and screw systems don't allow much movement, and so it's very important for compression and distraction for a you know bone to heal very, very well. Uh, you know, obviously there's limits to that. We don't want to jump off the deck and stuff. But you know, it, it's very, very important that they have some of that. And that's one reason why we kind of use uh, we do more titanium plates, which is the this is a titanium plate. You can see that it, it's a little bit thicker than some of the others uh, on, on some of these, but uh, you know, that tends to make that bone heal a little bit better. Now, I, that, you know, once it's healed, do we take that, that plate out? Typically speaking, I leave them in unless, okay, unless there is a problem. And the problems that we see typically is this radius then becoming uh, you know, smaller and smaller and smaller because it's not having to do any of the work. Okay. It's just like, you know, even though I have good legs and I sat in the wheelchair for several weeks, all my muscles are going to atrophy, that radius bone will also atrophy. And, um, you know, if that begins to happen, then I'd say take it out. If it's happened really, really bad, leave it in. And, oh, okay. do this, 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 <laughs> uh, you know, all those sort of things. How would you know? Do you x ray it here? Nah, well, you can. You can. But, um, you know, particularly speaking, most, you know, most veterinarians can feel it. I mean, it, it, it's right there. So it, it's not something that is uh, uh, too, too radical, something to do. It, you know, it's not uh, like trying to uh, feel a kidney or something. Yeah. They're, they're right there. And so you can, <coughs> frequently, literally, you can feel that plate on top of that, that radius as it goes around and kind of, you know, how thick that radius is. If it just, if it seems like it's, Thinner than it ought to be, then, then it should be x-rayed. Then that's done. You take out the plate is kind of a complicated procedure too. I kind of, I kind of recommend two surgeries. Take out the screws out, uh, leave a few in, and uh, 
uh, and, and let all those holes fill in the, where it is so that it gives less places for mistakes to break, uh, weak spots. And then uh, uh, once those are healed, healed and filled in, then uh, go ahead and take the restoration plate out and then uh, give the place to go while you get that. Uh, get that pulse Any other questions on that? All right, here's a teetotal mess. All right, uh, I, I, I really don't have time to list all the problems that I see here. Certainly, you see screw heads popping up out of the plate, okay? We, we have a radius that is like this thin for center. It is, uh, you know, it looks like pro probably the radius did heal. Um, this, this dog has actually been non-weight bearing since this repair. Um, probably one of the reasons why is the end of this plate actually you know, is in the joint and rubbing it so the dog could never like stand other than on top of these toes. Um, that sort of thing. And so you know, we've got a we've got a great big long, long carrying mess right here. This is the other view. Uh, you can <laughs> you you can see that this is a uh, this is a cut plate. All right, it means that. Uh, we, we get cuttable plates that are like 20 holes long, um, and so and they cut up the length, how long you need, except you don't cut up the leave this, <laughs> okay? You kind of make it look like the end of a real plate, uh, and you think so. and think you can you can actually see that this is, this plate is actually cut there in here, put in. Uh, this one just has to be tearing the shreds out of that that joint there. And, and one big, big, big no-no is there's a there's a hole right over the fracture front. So this this is a weak spot. You know, there's no screw there, so that's the weakest spot in the whole place. It's right over the place you want to put strip. So, but anyway, this this actually ended up being an amputation. Um, you know, it was uh, it was it was not salvageable sort of thing. Uh, and we see other problems with plates too. Uh, uh, you know, that we that we see uh, you know, coming to us from time to time. Gross picture. Okay. Oh wait. A uh, you know, you can uh, you can see this plate is exposed, uh, and there and there's various reasons for this. I won't get too deep deep into it, but uh, uh, it is kind of cool. You can read the serial number on it, okay. uh, and, and thanks for that. You know exactly what uh, what you got going on there, and what kind of uh, screwdriver you want to do to take that out there. I told you, it makes a good picture. Of me. You know, sometimes you're at the right spot every once in a while to take the right picture. <coughs> All right. Here's another bug move. Uh, this is a this is a plated leg as well. Uh, you can you can kind of see that it is the plate is broken. Okay. Now to break a plate, you 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 can almost bend a plate in a U. You just can't do that. Okay. So if there's enough cycles that do this, it's going to break, right? And so this was a cycle. This is uh, this was the fracture cycle that did. And one thing that you will notice with this. Well, maybe you won't notice, but I'll tell you the notes about this particular plate is it is put on instead of being on top, it is on the side. That was my dog, and it was done by a orthopedic <laughs> surgeon that did it wrong. Yes, it was. Well, here, here's the thing: you can get by with this a lot of times, but there's a lot of times you cannot. And and the reason the reason why I show you this is you know you, you're not going to really be able to tell your orthopedic surgeon where to put the plate. Okay. However, you know there are there are certain things, that, and, and certain surgeons uh, you know, just aren't familiar with Italian greyhounds, and so uh, this is actually what we call the compression side of the of the bone. All right. Uh, if I had a, uh, a a broomstick that I cut in half, and all I did was put a uh, just a strap across the top of it and held it right there in the middle, it's going to be struck. Now, if I roll it over and hold it right there, it's just going to be and, and flop to the floor. Okay, that that is the compression side. Okay, you roll it back up to the top. That's the tension side. Okay, that's where most of it, and so that makes it nice and solid and good. However, the the inside on you know, this side of a of an Italian Greyhound is the compression side. It's not in a beagle. Okay, it's not in a uh, uh, you know. You're a large dog, a great Dane, or whatever, but on a Teddy Greyhound, this is a compression sock. Uh, you can imagine that if they're if they're just turning and going a little bit like that, this is the compression side. It, it's going to it's going to break like that, and so that's what what this happens. So 
even though um, this is a very, very technically correct, you know, placement of a plate, um, uh, it means, especially with pistol, um, it, it gets you, uh, uh, it can get you in trouble on the tank green. This is the same view, just turn the other direction. Uh, and things with that, uh, you can kind of see that, you know, things are, I mean, the, the pin place or the, the screw placement and the, and the plate is fine and dandy uh, with those sort of things. The, the reasoning being for this or whatever, it gives you much better purchase uh, of the bone with the screws. There's much longer screws. Uh, you'll look at these. I mean, we're typically speaking in this uh, in this section of bone right here, we're looking at six to eight millimeter screws, occasionally a 10 millimeter screw. That's, that's not very good. Hey, uh, just to give you an example, a inch is, uh, is over 25 millimeter. Okay. So, you know, essentially a, uh, uh, something that's just you know, eight millimeters is just a, uh, uh, just a scrap of that, okay? So, uh, anyway, that's technically correct. So, uh, you know, you know, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there, right. Well, you know, that's uh, you know, so we actually took that plate out. You see, there's a lot of holes. There's actually uh, where some of those other holes were were actually drilled twice. Uh, and you know, these are these are not my holes. Okay, that are that are in that bone. But you can kind of see that we've got the, this right here is where the fracture was. And you notice too, uh, I told you about that that other plate that had the hole in it, and that was the, where it broke. You know, that one broke right at a hole, okay? So that is the weakest part of the, part of the plate. Uh, and I hate to say this, but that screw, uh, this screw at that hole actually, you know, kind of went through the uh, fracture and it really wasn't holding anything. So anyway, that's that's what we did. We kind of put it on top like a normal uh, sort of thing, but you kind of see holes everywhere in this, uh, in this guy. You did good, right? Uh, uh, oh. You were out of town. That's why I had to use somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was at, I was actually uh, at an AVMA uh, executive board meeting uh, and things, and I was, uh, uh, you know, and so I got these x-rays FedEx to me at the meeting, okay, and so, the, you know, so we kind of get this FedEx package or whatever, open it up, and so, uh, you know, during break the meeting, everybody's kind of holding these x-rays up, kind of looking at them uh, in an assessment situation, so I knew what I had to do when I get home. This is also another rescue. Uh, it's actually in the hospital right now. Uh, this is a, a fracture that uh, uh, was, was was taken care of. I don't know the history of that whatsoever. This is also a bilateral. I don't know if they happened at the same time or uh, I, don't, I don't know anything about that. All I know is is that the right leg is now broken. Okay, the left down here, kind of the normal spot. Um, and this is actually kind of a really long plate for both that but um, that's uh, some some people's preference. But uh, Anyway, so now I have to do what you, I just told you I'm not supposed to do. All right, you know, because you know, I didn't. What what I would have to do is take that plate out, the other plate, and I, you know, could I match holes? Could I do? Could it get there? I can't put a pin through there because it's got a, uh, uh, it got all these screws in the way. So actually, we're. Uh, so actually, I had to do, I had to put that plate on the inside of the leg, like I said, not to do, uh, and, and things. This first one on the tiny gray on the ever done. Okay, uh, I've done others, but not on the tiny gray yet. Uh, and things. So I had to kind of eat my words. I never, I never thought of this scenario before. Okay, so I want to make sure that you know that you know it's all of a, it's a fluid science. Okay, uh, and so we had to, uh, uh, you know, kind of actually kind of go between some of the other screws and. Make sure everything lined up and, and get her going. So, uh, uh, but that doesn't go great. Okay. That was a uh, that's a West Virginia picture. One early one morning uh, uh, in the helicopter, but you kind of got to be careful mountain climbing. Uh, shows you why we don't, we don't like towers too bad. All right. Here's a uh, here's another rescue situation. Um, this is uh, I can't remember this little girl's name. Uh, but she was, uh, this, this fracture was two and a half years old, okay? Uh, as you can imagine, uh, you, this, uh, you know the pads on the bottom of their feet? Right there is one. She has one right there, okay, where, where she walked on that all the time, okay? And so, um, you know, kind of, you know, 
Yeah, I kind of said ah and a few other words. But, uh, yeah, you know, there's sometimes when we're doing this, that, uh, you know those, like, curse words in the cartoons? All those little things? This little bubble pops over my head, you know, like I'm saying, but I don't really say it. Uh, I want to. But anyway, so it's just a, I just want to give you an example of other things that kind of happen. Uh, obviously, we're going to have to do some bone grafting and, and do some remodeling and, and uh, try to try to get this leg sort of straight. I wish I had a picture of, uh, uh, you know, a real life picture of, of this going on. I mean, it was, it was, it was really, really sad. Uh, but anyway, so we had to, we had to end up playing this, uh, this little guy here and, uh, and getting it all straightened out to the bone graft in there. And, uh, it's doing really good and she's, uh, uh, last I saw she was in a, uh, a really great uh, old lady lap. So right where she ought to be. I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll show you just uh, another disaster case here. This is a pin. What? You know, obviously I recommend pinning or pinning uh, and things. But, but a couple things have gone wrong here. This is, uh, uh, this is after the second surgery. Um, if, you, if you look closely, this, uh, this, this dog was non-weight bearing, meaning it, it was limping like crazy, couldn't, couldn't bear anything. It was still in a bandage, okay? Uh, I believe it was also splinted. Anyways, this is, uh, you can see the pin comes down into the joint. So that, that joint's not usable. Uh, you can use the toes, but you can't use this. Um, you also, can you see this right here? All right. I'll show you what that is. All right. It's a second pin. So apparently this was the first surgery. It broke off. I didn't take the other piece out. And so now, you know, so then they drove this other. And something you can't really tell right here, this is actually sticking out of the skin. Okay? Uh, so that, that's kind of ugly. But anyways. So, I mean, we didn't have any choice to, I mean, we, we had a, uh, an infected mess uh, and things slid to go in there and just try to uh, take care of that. And, and you know, this is a, uh, uh, this is a fairly young dog too. Great place for or many stuff to um, do that. My dogs don't come with these, but, all right? Uh, you know, I, you know, kind of what, what you're seeing here is kind of typical. It, it's really rare that I, I see one next day, uh, or, or I, I, I probably shouldn't see go with the average. Of course, that two and a half year one would uh, kind of screw that averages up, but I don't uh, get to see it. i show you a few, a few other little things that can happen uh, with us here. This was uh, seen by uh, an associate of mine, uh, hit by got hit by a car, and uh, this is kind of one of those whole body shots uh, that we, we, we don't really like to take, uh, but was looking for a bunch of lung problems and some other things that uh, very possibly might be going on. Uh, you can see this, this total crap here in the back leg. Uh, that's right, this is the knee right here, and, and all those fractures there. Uh, just another picture after it was splinted. Uh, so this is a 10-year-old dog uh, that, that actually has other health issues, has a bunch of other problems going on. And we really wanted to kind of be uh, uh, very easy and nice with this. We know that the blood supply of this can be really challenged. Uh, there's so many pieces in there. Uh, you could have screws, little big screws going over which direction, a bunch of stuff. You know, I wish I had bone glue that you could just you know put it together. It doesn't happen right now. So, so what we what we did actually, you can do this on a tibia, is put in what we call an external fixture. Okay. Now they, you know, uh, you may have seen those some in people or whatever, but this is this is actually uh, this this pin goes through and through. It's it's threaded, uh, so it holds it. It's almost like a screw. Uh, those sort of things. Uh, have these three up here, and so the weight load comes up through this, through these uh, uh, these pins, through this connector bar, through these pins, and all that uh, thing. So they can actually begin using that leg very very quickly. Uh, you know, it's minimally invasive. There wasn't even an incision uh, made for this. Uh, he was doing, you can kind of see that his lined up fairly nice uh, and things, but on an older dog, we, do it. we cannot do that with a radius on it. Well, you can do that with a radius on it. Uh, do not recommend it for a lot of reasons. And, uh, for one, just the, the, you know, there are circular rings that, uh, that, that can be shown and used, and they actually have wires, and they're small, and, and, and those are kind of iffy, but they're like, so heavy. I mean, it, it's like a pound and a half of stuff. <coughs> this dog's got to try to drag it around and, and do. It makes it very, very difficult. Uh, if you use an apparatus like this, you're looking at something that's going to make really kind of a big hole, uh, and, and it, it's a disaster uh, and things. But uh, you can see this is fairly good alignment. Uh, the pieces are there. Uh, uh, you know, they're uh, as we call it. They're all they're all in the same room. 
uh, so they can they can get some uh, some things together there. This is uh, uh, probably three weeks later. Uh, this is eight weeks later. It's uh, it's beginning to heal uh, in phases. So then we can just take take those uh, state dogs, uh, take all that hardware out, and uh, hopefully go happily ever after. Okay. The dog stayed with you the whole time. He's Pardon? The dog stayed with you the whole time. You know, this this was actually a local dog, and this is a this is a total different situation. So yeah, it went home, and we saw it every week. Changed bandages on it. Uh, it actually just has bandages around that apparatus, so it doesn't get hung on the furniture. Okay, I mean essentially, I mean that's you know, and it, and it, uh, it can kind of have some sharp edges, so we don't, you know, it's not killing whoever picks it up. And we also have to take care of those too, so that you know, get it. A little bit. I mean, very little, really, because you know, this is, uh, I mean, it's just a puncture wound with that that pin going there, and once it granulates, there's granulation tissue that that happens around that. It, it's, I mean, it's hard to make that get infected. Okay, so I mean, certainly it's on some prophylactic antibodies for first little bit to let granulate. But after that, it's usually very well. The, the problem we would see if, if that were a, uh, uh, that pin, if any of the pins got loose or were wiggling, that's a different story. But you know, if everything's solid and good, and everything's mm -hmm. fine, then, then we take the dog. I mean, it's just primarily just taking care of that, that outside apparatus. All right, we'll do a few other little weirdo things here for you. Um, this is also a neat, uh, only guy came, uh, uh, came to us that had been uh, uh, diagnosed with a hip problem. We uh, certainly uh, sedated, x-rayed some hips. Uh, we actually had found the problem previously. We just didn't know exactly what it was. Uh, but certainly there, there, was, there was a previous fracture here that had happened and was, was begin, already beginning to heal. We had a little bit of distortion because it did, was right here next to a growth plate. Uh, and things that you can kind of see the comparison between these two bones right here uh, of how they, how they look differently. I apologize, I hate way. Anyway, this is this is the good leg. It was supposed to be uh, like this is a puppy. This is normal. This is not broken, right? That's just a typical crest there. That uh, is a normal thing. This is the other one. Uh, as you can kind of see it. You should have put those side by side. As you can see that healing has already happened. And it's pr we primarily just uh, uh, gave some anti-inflammatories for that, uh, and really watch for any more uh, you know deformity that happens. And really, it, it straightened out did just fine. Pardon? Yeah, it's a weird one. That, that is not a, a usual at all. Uh, you're, you're talking about you know, fracturing this little bit on the inside of this right here. Uh, I have no idea. The puppies are puppies, man. Uh, you know, that's, uh, you know I, I don't know if that was, you know, a backflip or what. But it, it, it happened, and, and there it is, you know. So, uh, you know, I asked the puppy, didn't tell me. <laughs> Live in here. Yeah. Let's see, what was that? Okay, we'll just leave that alone. All right. I'm trying. I'm trying to zip through here and try to try to get you something. This is. Uh, I just wanted to show you this other plate that you may have seen um, through there. Uh, this is a really, 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 really distal fracture. Uh, you know that, that came in here. It also is uh, one that came to us uh, late, so to speak. Um, you know, it, it had been two or three weeks since it had fractured, so we wanted to make sure that uh, we got some good stabilization. This is the uh, uh, that, that green plate that you see. It's kind of a T, what we call T plate. Uh, I think these are uh, 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 2.0 millimeter screws in this. These are 1.5 millimeter screws in that, uh, and and they are titanium. However, uh, I will tell you, there are actually only there are three three holes here. Two holes here, but you see three screws. I broke one. <laughs> okay, so it, it, it just stayed with the dog. So, all right. Here's a here's another uh, uh, gizmo that happened. Uh, you know, it, that was like two years ago. Uh, just just had to go in, and you know, it wanted to heal, but you know, it's sitting there, and it comes walking in, and they're using these legs, you know, sideways. And, uh, it's it's yeah. Uh, those, those are guys who want rescued, and they, they, they have those eyes, you know. Here's, a, here's one, a real life one. Okay, this is a guy out of Canada that uh, uh, came in. He'd been repaired, he's plated. Okay, uh, and, and things, it was just, and he healed great. He just plated crooked. Okay, 
So uh, this was another guy, and you can, uh, uh, sorry about the blueness, but this is, a, these aren't digital x-rays, these are digital pictures of an x-ray. Uh, and they, so, so essentially what we, what we had to do was, remember we were talking about removing that plate, so we had to remove the plate, let all these holes fill in, okay? Uh, get our figured up what angle we're going to need to try to, try to fix this, because uh, we're going to have to uh, you know, kind of clean through this bone, actually both bones, uh, and get this thing, uh, get it cleaned up and, and dressed around. It was actually a bit crooked, or rotated as well. So it wasn't just like this, it was like this. So, that's just a, uh, um, you know, you can, you can see now that the holes are, are filled in. We got all this goblin good here, that's just reactionary stuff. Uh, and they, so now we can proceed. You know, now those holes are not holes anymore, we can go ahead and do, because if I, if I had done just taking that plate out and tried to do it then, you know, what if I had half a hole? You know, a, 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 you know, a, a hole and a half doesn't hold a screw. So uh, it's kind of weird. And this is uh, this is post office with a with a T plate. Uh, you can see one little tiny uh, hole that's still left down there. We didn't, we really didn't care about it. And, uh, and those are staples in the skin. And then that's that's right after. So it's straight. Right? That was actually the very next day, and he didn't care less. I mean, he was trucking around like crazy uh, and things. So. All right, this is, uh, this is good old Izzy McCoy. Um, most of the things I took on everybody's name out of there, but I apologize. This is local, so it didn't matter. Uh, and, and things. But this, this is a, a, a acutely limping dog out of the yard, bang. Limping, comes back in, can't, can't use his right rear leg. Uh, and things. So, what, uh, uh, you know, there, there is a fracture right here. Uh, I'll show you the next view. It's a little easier to see. See that? All right, and so, you know, so we've got a dog that fractured for, for no real reason. And so we're thinking, oh, you know, uh, there's got to be a reason. <laughs> you know, I mean, something has to happen and do. So anyway, we repaired that. Um, really pretty, nice. Uh, that's the way, it, the way it goes. And so when we, but when we think of these things and we, we've got to really, uh, you know, figure out what, uh, what's going on and, and why this, uh, this dog uh, fractured. This is uh, this is uh, ten weeks later. This is bone cancer. Okay, uh, this all around that. So uh, this dog did have, have you know, was a cancer bone. It may, you know, hindsight, I'm going, you know, maybe that bone was a little soft. Maybe you know, things that I was trying to evaluate at surgery time, everything anatomically looked okay. But uh, uh, anyway, this this dog was really really happy for uh, for a few weeks. I mean, it, it really used that leg really really nice. That's just uh, that's just Izzy's chest there. We we're just looking to see if uh, uh, before we amputate that leg, if there was any metastasis uh, anywhere else. Uh, that's my sister, the brain neck, and her dog. So uh, that's kind of obligated. Do you guys want to talk about knees, or are you done? Or? I mean, it's it's up to you guys. I don't I don't want to. I know you got dinner and that sort of stuff to happen too, but. Uh, it, uh, there's been some discussions and things about, about uh, luxating like patellas uh, and, and things, slip knee, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is kind of the normal thing. You want that. To, it, it simply is a mechanical thing, plain and simple. Uh, does it follow family lines? Yes, it can. Does it? Uh, but it is a mechanical, mechanical situation, when it, uh, and that's what makes it progress from a grade one to a grade two to a grade three to a grade four. My standard is a grade one is not surgical. Grade one does not have to go to a grade two. Grade four is, I guess grade zero would be ideal, but grade four is total trash, okay? A grade two, if a grade one does go to a grade two, it will always go to a grade three, and a grade three will always go to a grade four. Now, it might take a year to do that, it might take five years to do that, but it's gonna happen. So, um, you know, once it becomes grade two, get it taken care of. Um, this is this just, is really, we rarely see the ones that go out to the outside, that's what lateral means, to the outside. Most of them always come to the inside. Um, and I told you it's mechanical, and I may, I may not be a very good uh, representation of this, but it's just like a rope and a pulley. And uh, you know that if you, you, you come off to the side of a pulley and pull on that rope and do whatever, it's going to jump trap. And that's what happens essentially with, with these guys. Now, there's a couple of things, and I'm not talking about the ones that, you know, have trauma and this happened, but essentially, some of these dogs just mechanically, pure physics, uh, instead of having the muscles attached right here, are over this way, okay? And so it's kind of like trying to get it to jump the track. The other thing too that can happen 
is the other side of the pulley, which is the front, the, the front of the shin bone here. And, and essentially, uh, when this happens, it wants, especially in a puppy, so much in a grown puppy, it will actually bend the front of that tibia over. Okay? The more it does it, more, because remember that uh, growth plate I showed you that wasn't a fracture? I mean, it's soft and nice, and it just keeps tilting it over more and more and more you know, until it, it stays out all the time. Okay? And that bone is then, then totally distorted like, like this. And, and so uh, there are different, multiple things that can be done uh, with that, but primarily you have to have things lined up. Now, you can't take this muscle off the pelvis and stick it over here. Right? So we kind of got to work down here at the other end. So if it has a really, really shallow groove, uh, we do uh, cartilage sparing procedures to make sure that that, that groove is deep. Okay? So it will actually hold it in uh, and it will run smooth. God only makes cartilage once, and so we uh, we try to make sure we save as much of it as possible. Our next best thing, I mean, boy, could I make a pretty groove with a with a with a rasp and just make it real nice and pretty? That gets rid of all the cartilage, and, you know, we want that, okay, uh, for long term. Then the other thing, you know, we need to angle that uh, groove so that it it is going to be in line with everything, and then we have to make sure that the the far end is in line. And essentially, what that is is cutting the front of the tibia off, moving it over here, screwing it back down, okay, to, to get it to line up. Yes, the dog will be a little pigeon cut on that side. I mean, cow or, uh, uh, hawk will go out to the outside and, and kind of walk that way, but it's at least functional, and, and we'll kind of use that leg. Uh, once, once this happens and all that bone distorts over like that, all these muscles that made the dog stand, okay, these, these muscles right here in the front, since this is over here now, are actually asking that foot to pull up. All right, all physics. All right, is what happens. Just you know, this the way that it's made, it tries to. So it, some of those dogs can't even put their foot down with a grade four uh, luxate patella, and so they're trying to use these other muscles to try to get it down there, and they and it just can't. Uh, and so, so and uh, when you when you see a grade four, you actually know it's severely like this. So pretty tragic. Uh, this is just an x-ray, uh, you know, kind of shows the pelvis here, we won't worry about any of this, this stuff up here. Uh, but you can see that this kneecap, instead of being in the center of this bone and right here, is setting, setting over. This is actually a bilateral, uh, both of them are doing it at the same time. Unless it's trauma, there, are, there is a rare one that is only one leg. But when somebody comes to me with a, a IG that's luxating or just talks to me on the phone, I just say, listen, you know, there, there is another knee. It's using it, it just doesn't hurt as bad. But there's a good chance it's going to be bad too. I mean, it may only be a grade one, the other one's a grade three, but it's probably going to happen. So, it uh, doesn't always, but probably will. Oh, yes. I, I had a eight-year-old dog, I think, the lateral amputation. Uh -huh. My knee was really bad. Right. And I was telling you, well, my dad was sad. You know, I suspect, um, you know, I, I kind of look at it, you know, that, that very well may have been a traumatic something or other, okay, sometimes, because a lateral, you know, a spontaneous lateral flexation is odd. Um, you know, you know, what's my dog doing right now at home? I ain't coming. I don't know. All right? And, you know, could I come home to a, you know, a, a limp and leg and it's lateral flexating? Yes, I could. Um, and they, so, you know, could something... It's an, it's an oddity. I don't have a good explanation for it. Um, well, just lateral in general is weird. Even if people, uh, it doesn't happen, happen quite as often. Okay. Uh, one thing I will notice too, just just for your powers of observation, um, this, this dog also had the fracture tail. <laughs> so, just, just see that. Uh, this is just a sideways view. You know, this... This, this patella should be sitting up really nice, right there in the front, but it's not, it's laying over on the side. So you can't, you can't see it very well, it's hiding. It should, it should be a little bit more like that. <laughs> a little more like that. Um, question? Yes? Um, when you say you kind of follow um, family lines, does, does it always follow in the same grade, like you're a grade one, 
No, no. And, and, and to be quite honest, and I'm telling you um, what I see. I, you know, it's, I can't tell you what book to go to and read this sort of thing, but it's just been in my experience. So you know, I'm just going with that. Um, you know, I see it, and what what I see, you know, and, you know since I'm, I don't use it now, uh, you've seen a bunch, but it is um, so often. You know, this dog, you know, could be a, you know, might be you know three years old. It had puppies at two years old, and so then you start worrying about that those puppies. Most of the time. We don't sit in that puppy, but you sit in those puppy puppies. Right? I don't know why it skips, why it does, um, but that's that's the way it goes. I, I'll tell you that same thing about saddlebred horses. That's the uh, you can you can sure have a beauty. You, know, you can have a one point four million dollar set of horses. Okay? I know this for a fact. Had some ugly ugly babies, but uh, if baby babies look pretty nice. So that's uh, that's the way it rolls. This one. This this is uh, this is just one way to do. I, I typically don't do this much anymore. Um, th this pin hasn't been cut off yet. But but essentially that that TV crest has been cut off. A, a, a nice little bed made for it. It's moved over here and it's uh, and it's pinned down here. And this is just to keep the uh, pins migrating and, and doing that things. But that that one is repaired. But you can kind of see uh, both these patellas are kind of up and and uh, they're kind of in, in the place that they ought to be. Uh, you're not seeing the cartilage bottom of that very well, so it does extend down into that trucker group uh, really well. What's the recovery time for that surgery? Pardon? What's the recovery time for that surgery? Well, you know, uh, and, and let, me, let me get to you here just a second. Uh, you know, this leg was the most worst one. Can you see this? Okay. You see that big old bump? I mean, that, that happened from as a puppy, as that thing grew. Um, you know, it just distorted, 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 distorted. Um, you know that. Uh, you know that. So, I mean, this this right here should be way over here. You know, to, you know, in general, is the way, way it should be. So, uh, anyway, that's the way 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 it is. So, we're uh, that's way it is. Typically speaking, with uh, with these, it, it's amazing uh, how well they do immediately because they work. I, I mean, everything's where it ought to be, and, it, and it's not. And it, yeah, yeah, I just added surgery in there, and typically we use laser for these, um, you, know, uh, you know, a cutting laser instead of uh, uh, a scalpel blade because it seals some of the nerve endings, and, and I tell you, you know, it's just a couple days, or they're using them typically. Uh, without I mean, restriction? I didn't say without restriction. <laughs> but they're, but they're, I mean, but they're, they are using those legs and, and things, and they're, and they're comfortable. And typically, I, I'll tell you this too, I, I generally do both at the same time. Um, you know, some pre uh, prefer to do one than the other, but I feel like they kind of do some of their own physical therapy. They do do much better uh, in our hands than what they do. Uh, I do them one at a time because then it kind of gives them the option to use the other leg and do it. But we, we tend to do the both at the same time. Uh, but typically, uh, you know, we just cut bone, so that's like a fracture. So we don't say pull out for eight weeks, but, but generally speaking, uh, after two weeks, you're, you're hard pressed to keep them still. Yeah. So I mean, they usually do very, very well. I mean, even I mean, there are ones that are so bad. They've been they've been cocked up like this so bad that we literally uh, have have not enough. We cannot stretch this stuff out far enough. So we actually have to cut the femur in two places short, repair the femur, and then do the rest of the surgery. So we got enough stuff to work with. So. This is kind of a little bit more typical with uh, with this group. Take care of that. Um, some of the very, very mild ones uh, we'll do, we'll, also, we'll just do a cruciate, kind of like something we do for our cruciate repair, uh, an ACL repair, uh, to just kind of bring uh, kind of bring that tibia around. But you can only bring it around so much. It's a, it's a hinge joint. You start twisting on too bad, you get things don't work right. So uh, there are there are some we can we can just do with do with that. <laughs> All right. I was I was I was forced to put this slide in here and leave the name on there. Uh, and thanks. But I just want to go over. Uh, this is kind of another problem that I, I see quite often with the tank rigs, and, and it is a uh, uh, it, it is some cervical pain and cervical instability, cervical uh, stuff. All right, that that goes on. Uh, this is uh, this is Miss Allie. Uh, and, and what we're what we're talking about, uh, these are the cervical uh, vertebrae down here. There's seven of them. Um, this is uh, uh, this is the yes joint. Does this? This is the no joint. Does that? Uh, and things just like in people. And then, uh, but all these joint spaces should be identical. 
or, or very close to identical. And you can kind of see that uh, this one really doesn't match that one very well, and this one right here really doesn't match too well. Um, and this is uh, looking at it uh, in a little bit of a flex view. You have to be very cautious about this because uh, you can actually pinch the, the, the spinal cord and go on that uh, sort of thing. But you can kind of see where you know, the spinal cord lays right here on top of the vertebrae. Okay? You can kind of see it comes right here, and then there's a big hump. Uh, and, and things with this. And so, and then this joint right here is not the best in the world either, but you can kind of see that this, is, uh, this one certainly is pinching, uh, pinching this dog and creating a bunch of, uh, of nerve problems. And so, typically speaking, uh, uh, with Allie, uh, all we did was simply do a, uh, a cervical penetration. Even though this is a problem child and this one doesn't look too, too happy, this was, uh, this was a problem previous. Okay? It's been a while. There's a lot of bone growth there and stuff. But, um, you know, whenever we go in, we, we actually go in right here, part of everything, there's some important stuff right here. Uh, we get out of the way, and then, uh, you know, ventral slot goes and take the, uh, the things out of there and, and uh, make, you know, kind of make it easier and try to take some of the pressure off that spinal cord. Uh, and then we do them all, okay? Uh, we, if we can reach six, seven, we'll do it. Uh, and things, uh, or seven, uh, uh, one, we'll do all those. Uh, that we can up to here, and we'll do all the. Uh, if it's going to happen here, we just say it won't happen there. So while we're in there, we just do it once. This is uh, this is just a BD view, uh, looking at it, and you, uh, you know some of the differences you can see, especially right in this. You can see that that joint space, that joint space are really pretty. I think another problem is a good uh, illustration. Here, another problem we see also with IGs, and it actually can paralyze them. Uh, is this little this little nubbin right here on the front? Of Bone right there, you can kind of see it. Is a uh, uh, it's called a dense, and sometimes those will not form properly, and uh, it can really cause some pain. And it's mainly instability uh, because of the, the way the, the dog moves uh, with um, with that. So the the bird, it kind of keeps the vertebrae uh, in the right position. On some dogs, that's very. This is an easy one to to, to see that. Uh, this is like an accordion, okay? Uh, I mean, you know, that's kind of normal, that's kind of normal, that's too close, that's way too wide, that's crap. I mean, you know, it's, it's all, uh, you know, this, this one has been a long, long, long time ago. Uh, it's, it's almost fused together. And when they fuse together, um, it's less painful, okay? You know, you know because it, it's not, not creating some problem. Same thing, it, it's all over the place there, okay? And so, uh, and, you know, you, you can kind of see that uh, down through here is fine. Then you got the big nut, big nut, you know, then, then that mess there. Uh, and she was ventral slotted as well. Uh, this dog here is a uh, is a real weirdo. This one had, uh, not weirdo, I should have said that. <laughs> Oddball. Uh, but where the, the nerves come out of this spinal cord to, to, to make everything functional, go to the front legs and that sort of thing through here. Um, and, and, things. and that was one of the problems that Allie was having too. Is, uh, she was very lame in one leg and kind of holding her to do it because I imagine she, she was numbing that leg sometimes and you know, some real problems. But, but this one really, uh, these were really, really close together and the pain, uh, you know, of where those things were pinching those nerves right there, it's called ridiculo ridiculopathy, ridiculitis sort of thing. So, um, essentially, these are some cantilus bone screws. Uh, that we use just to actually space that, uh, so that we spread that out and, uh, and they could uh, they could kind of form to, to make that uh, a much better thing. You can kind of see how that that has helped, and, and and that took the pain away from those those nerves. Uh, that's a little tricky procedure there. You don't want to put some fruit to the final forty, <laughs> and that's just mistreating too many yikes. <laughs> Um, this was just a little fracture. You saw one of those cancellous bones in, uh, in or screws that uh, so that was just a slab fracture. Uh, There's a happy customer, right? All right, let's get into some happy stuff. How many see? Oh, baby. Yeah, baby. You never like the baby. Come on. Since we had all these x rays, I thought, oh, this is like something nice. How many? Either count heads or spines. <laughs> There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. That's all. Okay. 
and I'm sorry, but they're all coming the wrong direction. So that's, uh, that's the way it's going to be. Now, I do have some, I do have some gross pictures here, so don't, that was not. You know, you're from New York. But, but, yeah, it was, I'm sorry. I had to stop. I drove down the road, turned around, came back. My wife and I were up the Finger Lakes uh, 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 when I was talking up at Cornell. I just had to take this picture. Fix the place up, look. <laughs> I know it's really, really late, but if you do, 